everyone, PJ Crypto here. We talk cryptocurrency on our way to financial freedom. Quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and nothing we say on this channel is financial advice. So please everyone, do your own research when it comes to investing in cryptocurrency. At the 2022 Metaverse Expo, I was really intrigued by a few speakers that I wanted to bring to this channel that I was able to capture some content while there at the Expo. And those speakers that I want to bring to you today Play to Earn Gaming with clips from FaZe Clan, Jacob Sloan, the CEO of Meta Ops Gaming, and Nick from Glizzy Royale, and Ian Finer from Freckle Trivia. I hope you enjoy these videos. They were a delight to watch at the expo. So without further ado, let's roll the videos. What's up, y'all? How's it going? Good, thanks. All right. We ready to talk about a little uh, Play to Earn Gaming today? All right, guys, my name is Ian Finer. I am the founder of Freckle. We are a play to earn trivia game. I've got some awesome, awesome panelists today. We have Jacob from Meta Ops, we have Nick from Lizzy Royale, and we have the legendary clips from FaZe Clan. So uh, today is all about play to earn gaming, a little bit of play to earn gaming in the metaverse. You know, and I, I, I want to throw it to these guys because they, they represent the play to earn gaming space and, and really what it encompasses. And I, I love all the projects here. So I just want to kick it off with a couple of intros. Uh, Jacob, why don't you take it away? Tell me a little bit about yourself, a little bit about MetaOps, what your project is, you know, and uh, we'll pass that along to, to Nick and Eric. Mic check, mic check. There we go. Uh, so my name is Jacob Sloan. I'm one of the co-founders for MetaOps Gaming. We're a first-person shooter on the Solana blockchain. Right now, fully playable, six versus six. Major focus on the competitive aspect of gaming. Roll it up. That's a great question. So I think there is some 
semantics involved when it comes to that term. Uh, you know, play to earn, people try to look at it as, oh, I'm playing a game to make money. And at that point, to me personally, it becomes a job. Uh, I like to look at it a little bit differently. What we're focused on is giving people the opportunity to earn. So you can still enjoy the game. It's not the end goal of you know, your playing experience, but you do have the opportunity to earn things that do have real world value or value within our ecosystem in general. Um, I like to dub it play and earn, uh, or play and own, instead of play to earn, uh, but that's just me. I mean, I 100% I agree with everything uh, Jacob said. Um, the interesting thing is the kind of first gen of kind of crypto gaming was very focused on that earning aspect. Um, a lot of those games, you know, no games in particular, are very focused on subtracting people with that, you know, kind of get rich quick or Axie you know, Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> not, not my words. Um, but yeah, no, it's it was kind of all about making money, all about collecting tokens, you know, that type of thing. Our games and I think games kind of building now, very focused on just making fundamentally good games and then the earning the tokens that comes second to that. Uh, for me, it's going to be a little bit different. I feel like I'm on the other end of the, you know, on the side of this, just because I'm probably going to be one of the people consuming on the play to earn side. So um, I am a gamer. So for me, what it looks like, like you said, it's more or less like a play and earn, or play and own kind of ecosystem. That's what it looks like to me. But I hope that we get to something that you know we can reward the users more and have more people involved in the communities and stuff like that. Because right now, obviously, it's very hard to actually own something tangible video games in that in that space. So I'm excited to be here learning from you guys about how we can bridge that, that gap. Well I think that's great because we have you know creators of the games and then we have the traditional player of the games and, and you all have provided a unique perspective especially through that. You know I think that's something that Jacob said is very interesting and someone said to me once that you know there's no issue with the play to earn games. It's with the play to earn players and, and the gamers and you know, they, they have this, you know, particular initiative when they want to play to get rich, right? You know, that's, you saw so many people playing Axie Infinity and trying to, you know, pay their rent with it. And I, I don't think, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong here, right, but the goal of, of your games isn't to let people play so they can pay their rent or pay so they can get rich, right? It's, it's, to, pay, it's to play to be able to give them ownership and value over something that traditional gaming doesn't necessarily have. Am I wrong? Absolutely. Right? So I think when you know a buddy of mine said to me that there's no issue with the play to earn you know, games but the gamers themselves is that's just a point of view shift. And I think that as we start to create, you know, more appealing and attractive games like, you know, Blizzard Royale and Meta Ops, you know, you're gonna bring in a whole, you know, cohort of traditional gamers that are playing the game to play the game. And the fact that they're actually winning and earning and you know bringing stuff into their uh, collections that add actual value and stores of value and asset classes is going to just be something that's secondary, but you know something that's equally attractive as the game itself. Um, so yeah, so what aspects of NFTs and you know the ownership of these particular maybe in-game assets are you the most excited about you know in the Web three gaming space? So I guess to get Straight on to the point there. I mean, the most exciting aspect to me is the interoperability or the composability side of NFT technology. What that means is, for example, traditional games, you got, we'll just use Halo and Call of Duty as an example. Two completely different games, two completely different communities, but in this space, they would be able to not necessarily share assets, but you'd be able to bring and showcase the same assets across two major ecosystems which is something that traditional games don't offer. Uh, the great thing about NFT technology is one true ownership. It is your asset. It's you know, proof that it's yours. You can sell it, you can do whatever you want with it, you can burn it, whatever, uh, but that is, you, know, you earned it, that's yours. You can use it across multiple ecosystems, whether it's an in-game item like a gun, or if it's like an access pass that gets you these exclusive, you know, exclusive access to different areas and different games. Long story short there, um, you know, definitely excited about the interoperability. You know, me and Nick from Blizzy Royale have been discussing the ways that not just our projects, but the ecosystem in general can benefit from that technology. Uh, so I'm sure that we will talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, for me, it's really just about giving power to the gamer and 
just letting people letting people own their stuff, right? I mean, that's so cool. And just the idea of like kind of moving away from the the kind of you know corporate kind of like stranglehold over gaming right now, where it's like more and more about how can you monetize the player, how can we extract money, versus how can we give value to the player, how can we you know make them feel a sense of pride, a sense of excitement to you know play games and kind of renew that kind of OG kind of spirit that kind of gaming had, you know, in the early 2000s, I like to think, when I was, you know, in middle school. That, that, that was, like, kind of the peak of gaming for me, personally. So I'm looking forward to get back to that. With, uh, what, three. <laughs> no, yeah, I completely agree. Like you said, I'm excited to be able to represent myself in multiple games with you know, the fact that all I have to do is plug in my wallet and it can read what I own. And I can exist in Fortnite. I'm just using these as examples. I can exist in Fortnite, Call of Duty, Halo, and maybe the character isn't exactly the same in every game, but it still, you know, generally, you know, has the same characteristics, whether it be the same hat or whatever. You know what I'm saying? How you identify yourself in those games is going to be awesome. That and we're going to be able to own it, and the fact that the ecosystems will exist, like you said, in a way where they don't now. That you're, you know, like in Fortnite right now, if you buy the, uh, you know, one of the skins in there, and Fortnite just goes offline or it's not popular anymore, all that money you spent is now just sitting on that server there. You don't actually own that, that's their property. You know, but you're spending your hard earned money on that. So I love the fact that this tech is going to change that and actually give ownership to people who aren't used to it and uh, give them more opportunity to be able to do something with that. And I think that's going to drive the, you know, the ecosystem. I think that segues really nicely into, into my next point. I mean, gamers already exist in these ecosystems where they're paying for microtransactions for assets they don't actually own, right? Or they're spending time, you know, and, and I'll talk about this in, in my in my talk after this about how time is, you know, our, our one of the most valuable commodities that we have and how you choose to spend it is, is you know, you have to be very careful with that, right? Because it's endlessly depreciating. So you have people who are spending time in these tournaments to earn an in-game asset that then becomes essentially valueless. They don't have any ownership of it, right? So, you know, in, in that regard, why are traditional gamers so genuinely risk averse or off put by the player and gaming space when they already exist in like these ecosystems that are completely set up for it with microtransactions that again end up to be completely valueless? That's a that's a hard hitter right there. I thought this was about softballs, I guess. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep them all soft, you know? Uh, no, that's a fantastic point though. Um, yeah, it goes into a lot of different categories of topics, you know, onboarding, you know, how you can do that better, what are gamers really looking for, uh, and just to kind of circle back to our initial conversation, competitiveness is missing from this space. There are not too many projects, well now there really are, there's more popping up, but we'll say that. You look back six months ago, there was almost no project that was playable, functional, and had any kind of in-game economy that was also focused on the competitive nature that human beings love in general, not even just gamers. Um, it is an interesting dynamic because you have to attend to the investors, you have to attend to the gamers, and then you have to attend to people who aren't an investor or a gamer, but still want to be active in your community. Whether that's through your lore, whether that's through you know just doing social events, doing tournaments, having these large broadcasts, just entertainment in general, the whole industry. Um, but I will say, from what we've seen, especially when we first started, we used to go on Twitch and just guerrilla market our lives away. Like, all day, every day, going on Twitch, trying to get streamers to come and play our game when we're in the very bare bones. And one thing that was missing was, well, one, nobody wants to showcase a game that's broken and glitchy. And two, people think NFTs are a scam. That still mindset is out there, and we have to change that. It's not for nothing either. I mean, it starts with Axie Infinity, most player earned gaming models, their economy, you look at this massive blow up, just FOMO, I'm talking about a token model right now. So you get this huge spike in volume, and then it just trickles down, and it just slowly dwindles away. And that's because there's no balance in their economy. So the first thing that a traditional gamer can see is none of these ecosystems live on it. They all fail, they all have a horrible balance in their economy, and it's not even fun to play. So why would they stay around? Now you're seeing a bunch of games like Us, Meta Ops, Royale, go on Fractal.is, huge Solana gaming marketplace, 
all these really AAA quality games out there covering a variety of categories that are focused on giving the player a fun experience. You can't expect to onboard people if you're giving them, that is, you know, something they were used to playing 25 years ago. It's just not going to cut it, but that's just a little bit of you. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll answer the question uh, more directly. Uh, the reason why people don't aren't into it is because a lot of the games just suck. Like, they're just not fun. <laughs> it's, the games are very cash grabby, very just short term in nature, just let's get money and let's let's rub, let's get out of here. Uh, no future kind of building. Um, and part of the reason, like on a more positive note now, um, you know, the space is literally like a year old, two years old maybe at most. Like, we're talking about something that is so cliche, but we're so early, right? Like, it's so early um, in the space. And, you know, like Jacob said, um, us, you know, MetaOps, so many other great games on Fractal are going to change that, like, give us a year, give us a year and a half, and you're going to start seeing that this space can be mainstream, and once, you know, like, if you look at games like League of Legends, they kind of introduced, like, skin monetization, and that was, like, very crowded upon, and now it's totally chill, and it's because it's a good game, it's just a really good game, they put a lot of time to it, it's one of the biggest games in the world, so I think that same trend is going to happen in this space, and all it's going to take is people building good games and caring about it, so... Yeah, that's a builder's perspective. And now from a player's perspective, well, why do you think a lot of your peers are, you know, averse to this space? And what brought you into it? Why do you embrace it with open arms? Because I know you do. Honestly, it's just because I see the future. I see that there's problems that the tech can solve. And obviously we're early. So it's just important to be early with them as a player, as a person from my industry, so I can problem solve with these people and, and bridge that gap. Because like you said, you know, in a year or so, there is going to be an easier way to have these ecosystems exist. There is going to be a way where I can, you know, identify myself in all these different games and, and be able to you know, own things in them in a, in a way that I wasn't able to now. Um, so yeah, you know, as of right now, though, like you said, it can definitely be a little bit off-putting from a from a player's perspective, just because the tech isn't there, the right people aren't aren't even thinking about it yet. So now it's just about getting those people to look in this direction. Let's get them in the same room, show up to events like this, you know, connect the networks, connect the dots, and that's what I love to do. Yeah. No, no, I, I agree. I mean, we're all gamers, right? You know, we, we play games, and I think the expectation from a consumer's perspective is that, you know, if I'm going to be playing play to earn games, you know, I want them to be AAA quality, I want them to be high fidelity, I want them to run in 60 frames per second in 4K and play on my PlayStation 5. And, and I don't think we're too, you know, far away from that, but... Right now, we need to bring in, you know, more of the mass adoption perspective, and the way that we're going to do that is by creating the games like MetaOps and Blizzard Royale, and you know, onboarding people to these Web3 games from their from their traditional, you know, gaming perspective, and you know, folks like you, you know, at Phase Plan are going to help do that, right? Because you have your platform, you have your audience, like you can take people's hands and, and be that sort of shepherd into the Web3 gaming space, and I think that it's very important to have, you know, the three of you up here to sort of combine all those perspectives because it is really important. Um, so what are you guys doing in that regard to bring play to earn gaming or web free gaming in general into the mainstream? And how do you think that these brands, you know, your Sony Interactives, your Microsoft, how do you think that they're going to maybe take a note from you guys and, you know, bring that into their own ecosystems with Xboxes and Playstations and the big publishers and stuff like that? And how far do you think we are away from the mass adoption of play-to-earn gaming, and do you think it will one, at one day become an industry standard? Um, I mean, I, I guess the way I look at it is that um, the fact that we're still calling it play-to-earn or pay-and-earn gaming means we're not at the mass adoption phase. I think mass adoption comes when there's not really that delineation anymore. It's just, this is a game, and you can own some of the stuff here, you can get this token too if you want. You don't have to do it, it's optional, but it's there and like you can maybe get some money from it, it's kind of cool. Um, and yeah, I think that's, in a nutshell, what mass adoption looks like. It's not about forcing it down people's throats, it's not about making every little thing in the game an NFT or everything a token, it's just about kind of, you know, elegantly introducing this stuff, you know, kind of slowly, you know, Get doing it in like a sustainable, fun way where it's not you know pay to win. It's not exploiting anyone. It's not cash grabby. 
Um, and I guess like in terms of just raw time, I mean, it's tough to say. I would say, you know, things are moving quickly. I, I would say two years, three years, things are gonna be, it's gonna look totally different from, from now. Oh yeah, so for me, how I'm gonna, you know, be using my platform for, you know, to push the knowledge that I'm able to access through Web3 and, and the people that I meet, I'm gonna make sure that, you know, I share that knowledge with everyone the best way that I can through my brands and my platforms and, you know, like you said, bridge that bridge that gap so we can get there and show that ownership is possible, show that there is a better way that we can do this as gamers, as creators, you know. Um, and it really isn't about the money right now. And a lot of people think that it's about the money and that's why it's not, you know, it's not received well in this moment. But making sure that, you know, we're all thinking ahead is important. That's why I want to surround myself with those people who are, you know, forward thinkers. And that's how I'm going to be able to make sure that I'm doing my part in this space, at least, you know, speaking for myself. No, and just to kind of bounce off of some of the points both of you guys made, um, I mean, one, what we're doing at Meta Labs, I guess just to start, is we're focused on integrating some technology, what we call plugins, um, that just make the playing experience better. Whether it's the user experience in general, UI, UX design, or like the actual tech, like connecting your wallet, wallet generation, doing it for the player, instead of having to educate them on this entire process of going to set up a phantom wallet, go score your seed phrase, don't do this, this is how you do a transaction, this is how much you need for gas, Blah, 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 blah. It's a lot for a new player to take in. Somebody who's familiar with NFTs and crypto, sure, piece of cake, breeze, I've made 150 different wallets, right? Somebody who's coming from a traditional game where they can just download it, play it, and have fun and start leveling up and experiencing the entire ecosystem, they're not gonna go through those 12 steps to just to play a game. That's not as fun as a traditional game that they're used to playing. So there's two sides of that, just ease of access, um, and one thing we're doing is focusing on like a free-to-play model and then having the user, if they want to start doing the play and earn or play and own experience, then yeah, they can you know connect a wallet and play that version of the game as well. Um, so really just tending to both sides of the, the hemisphere there. Uh, and then as far as like getting big names into the space, like you're, I, I honestly, Microsoft is gonna is already coming into this space. You already got you know Facebook Meta coming into the space. Those big brand names are already starting to to you know dip their toes in the water. But there's no reason, in my opinion, that it's just extra overhead costs for them to try to do this at this current time. Right now, we are the people leading this space. Right? It's not the big brands. And that's because we're not in it to make a crap ton of money at this point. You know what I mean? Like we're in it to build an experience that's never been seen before. And they're coming in with, oh, well, if you know, we're giving our players actual ownership, we're missing out on opportunity to earn money from them. Like, why would I let this guy sell this asset to him if I can just sell that same asset to him and get two people instead of one buying it? Um, so I think, you know, just the monetization models there isn't ready for big brand names at this moment. It's mostly cost, and I can attest that development work on the blockchain is not cheap. And doing it to their scale would cost them billions and billions of dollars with super high risk. So I don't think, you know, I think it's still gonna be a good five years away at least until we see them really start trying to adopt the technology as a whole. You know, you saw some backlash, I can't remember what game it was, but they released an NFT for their game and like 85% disapproval rate from their players. Like, just no, we're not gonna have it. It looks like a cash grab. There's no point in you doing this, which I agree with them at that point having one asset that's an NFT, but still having thousands of microtransactions, that doesn't benefit anybody but that company. Um, but yeah, as far as timeline goes, I think we're pretty far away from a full takeover by big brand or big industries, um, but that's why it's our chance right now. You know, us, Blizzy, smaller projects, people with the drive, people with the determination, willing to work 15 hours a day for your community. Like these are games built by gamers for gamers. Um, and that's just something you don't see with the industry. You know, big, big brand industry guys. I want to call it, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a selfish perspective there, right? You know, and uh, it's the difference between selfishness and selflessness. And I think when you're building something as a gamer for gamers as opposed to building something to make money, that's just the way it works. So we're basically out of time, but I'll cut into my presentation a little bit because uh, I want to ask just one more question to each of you. 
So first, uh, Nick, what are you most excited about Blizzy Royale? What do you have planned? Can you share anything with us about the game? And uh, yeah. Yeah, um, so I mean, something I'm really excited about is just like the community aspect of it and starting to, like in terms of development, we kind of have what our alpha done. Um, in the next month or so, we're gonna release kind of what we're like dubbing our like, season one. And that's gonna come with tournaments and prizes and NFTs and stuff like that that we're just giving away. Um, so that community building is something I'm really hyped for and just getting these early adopters into the game and finding ways to reward them. And uh, where can people uh, find out more about Blizzard Royale? Yeah, so we are at Blizzy Royale on Twitter. We have a Discord, which is discordgg Blizzy Royale. Those are the two main hubs for us. Um, we're looking at making a YouTube channel soon, getting on TikTok. So, but yeah, the, right now, those are the two spots you can uh, find us. Awesome. And uh, Clips, what are you playing right now? And uh, what games most excite you right now in the play to earn space? Obviously these two guys, but give me give me a couple others that you're really interested in and maybe if you're working on anything, tell us about it. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so uh, right now one of my favorite games that I'm playing is Valorant. It's a PC game. I'm a PC gamer. Um, I grew up playing console games, but um, I like to play on the mouse and keyboard now. So Valorant's my personal game that I've been no life in. And uh, as far as any current plans, I'm um, really excited to be working with TCG World. You know, I'm actually going to be testing out the metaverse here in a bit, so I think you can get to the front, right? Yeah, yeah. Right there in the front, so I'm going to be going over there. Really excited about that. Um, some other play to earn games off the top of my head. Um, I, I did get a chance to test out Meta Ops, and that was a vibe. I'm not going to lie. You know, no bias because he's up here next to me, but that was also a vibe. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think. I cannot think. I got a really deep dive, you know what I mean? And also, MetaOps is one of my first Solana blockchain uh, projects. I'll even, even actually making a wallet for Solana too, so that was, that was awesome. That's uh, what it's all about, right? Yeah, so, so that onboarding process, so little things like that, it was actually educating me. So I'm, actually, that's one of the main things too that I'm really excited about all of this, is just educating myself, the opportunity to educate other people on what I'm learning is, is super exciting to me, and it's changed my life. So I'm hoping that I can share that with other people. And I can't spill any more beans, though. No, it's all good. I know, I know, I know. Uh, Jacob, uh, same question as Nick. I know you've got some cool stuff coming up. Tell me a little bit about you know what you're most excited about with MetaOps, where people can find you, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so a couple things on the horizon. We do have a booth over there, actually, with Freckle. Go uh, play MetaOps, guys. Can, it's you, sick. <laughs> you can come play the demo. Uh, today, I believe our developers are pushing a pretty large update may come more towards the end of today at the convention, but we are adding like our first, in, I guess, insight into our metaverse side of our gameplay. So yeah, we're focused on fast, fast-paced, competitive, tactical shooter style gameplay, but at the same time, we want that social interaction aspect as well. So we're updating our game to have bunkers. Every single player, we're not selling you land. Every single player gets their own bunker environment, customizable to your liking. Uh, and then we're also, having a very, very big update to our current NFTs. We have uh, PFPs that are out right now, and they're transitioning into AAA 3D character models that we've been working three months straight with seven designers and modelers to you know, get this art perfect. Um, and that's getting rolled out this upcoming Monday, but we are gonna put it into our demo and our dev test version, and let you guys walk around with those characters, so definitely stop by the booth and check it out. All right, so uh, give it up for our three panelists. Woo! Yeah, Man, Nick from Blizzy Royale, and Jacob from Meta Ops. Uh, Jacob is actually going to be speaking after me. Stick around, I'm about to do a little uh, presentation on Freckle Trivia, the future of advertising, gamification, and big brands in Web3. So please stick around. If you're out there, let's go. Everyone come out, and uh, make sure you check out Meta Ops. Stop by our booth, and uh, we'll, we'll all be around for, for more questions.